Da -da -da -da. Welcome to the WAN Show, starting again. Yay. Which will make no sense to those of you watching the VOD. Yay. Uh, we've got... We're totally doing this for the first time. We've actually got some pretty crap topics this week. No. Yep, they're crap. Um, we do have a couple... We can polish it. We, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you can polish the crap as long as it's not diarrhea. <laughs> Oh man! Try and polish diarrhea. You just end that up with a. That would be a more advanced process. With you a might poop be smear. To, well, you could like uh, put it in like an ice cube tray. Oh, so you freeze it. Freeze it. Freeze it, then polish it. Yeah. That could more work. work but that could possible. Work. I mean, can you imagine a poop ice cube? Like, what would be a <laughs> what would be an appropriate context for that? I mean, if you if you're if you, <laughs> you need improvised projectiles that might also cause disease. Yeah. So if you're this far into the show and you're thinking, hmm, is this going to be one of those ones where uh, they actually have tech news, or is this going to be one of the ones where they just BS for an hour? <laughs> Hopefully, that's already clear. <laughs> we do have some we do have some real topics though. Uh, crash plan for home says au revoir. Au revoir. That's goodbye in Italian. Um, they are pulling out of the home market. Samsung's boss and heir jailed for corruption. Jailed. Oh, this just in. Intel's eighth generation mobile processors are just updated seventh generation tips. Tips? Chips. They're not tips at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm having I'm having one of those. But days. the tip of them has been updated. I'm gonna argue but jet it's lag. Essentially the same. Jet lag. You know I was in New York this week, right? Yeah, but didn't. Oh no, you got back yesterday. I got back. Okay. I, I, I got, uh, okay, I was at the airport in New York at 5.30 Eastern time yesterday. Whoa. So at 3.30 home time, <laughs> I was at an airport <laughs> getting on what would have been a 5.30 our time flight. Getting off. Oh uh, no, on, boarding. At this airport? At that airport. Oh. Then I flew for six hours and I got off the plane at 10.30 a.m. our time <laughs> and came to the office for the day. So I'm going with it. I'm going with the gentleman. You did seem very tired that day, and I was like, huh? Okay, sure. <laughs> well, did you notice that I was only gone for about no. 35 hours? I wasn't here. Yeah, to New York and back, plus doing the entire Samsung event on my own. <laughs> <laughs> on your own? Okay, I only vaguely heard about I this. I had no camera person. Why? Because, you know what, okay, we'll get to it after the intro. Okay. Um, so the Vega shortage could last until October, intro, boom. <laughs> I mean, who really cares anyway? <laughs> who is buying Vega? <laughs> okay, does this work? Uh, I don't know. Uh, not yet. Okay. What the crap? Okay. Wait, what about the other one? Why don't I just try the yeah, other try one? That, yeah. Okay, uh, um, uh, uh, sponsors. Fresh books! Ah, They're fresh books. books that are fresh. Savage jerky! Savage jerky! jerky it's less fresh because it's preserved, because it's jerky, it's smoked. But relative, relative to jerky. Fresh. Yeah, relative to other jerky, I guess it's fresh. Yeah. Um, in that there's less preservatives and nitrates. Um, yeah. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna put this back. Huh. Let me see. But why isn't my screen share working? Confused. Confused. Disappointed. Confused and disappointed. And uh, hold on. I didn't have the thing on. And no, it's still not working. Still not working. I don't understand. Okay. Um, also, this might be. This is, is this like the not working. End? Is that uh, the official end of? XSplit. The end of XSplit. I don't know. Okay. Well, because that's. AVIO um, has issues with XSplit. Yeah. And blames it on XSplit and refuses to do things because they blame it on XSplit. Yeah, that's. Um, Epifan. Epifan. Yeah, no, I'm. So, okay, that's probably a topic of discussion. Is it finally time for us to move to OBS? Let's find out. Um, and actually, another good discussion topic that we've got here is Is Float Plane Dying? I don't know what would make people think that, but that is definitely a. Uh, I'm, I'm stoked on that as a topic of conversation. What is that a topic? Where does that come from? I have no idea where that came from. Was that um, just like posted in the doc? What were we talking about before we rolled the intro? And I said we were going to talk about it after the intro. Uh. I don't know. Crap. I have no idea whatsoever. 
Maybe Twitch chat will help us with this. Is Floatplane dying? Where did you get that from? But I'm, uh... It's not. Yeah, it's not. Hold on, are they gonna help us? It's doing quite well. People are asking if I dye my hair. Oh, the trip to New York, that's right. Ah. Why do I dye my hair? I'm only 31. I can't believe I'm 31. That's not too bad. It's not too great. You look like a very young 31. Thanks. That's like saying, you know, for a corpse, you really don't look that decomposed. You don't look like you're in your 30s. So don't worry about it. I wouldn't assume that you're in your 30s. You've aged a lot since you, like, had kids and started this company. <laughs> Thanks. But me too. It started nice. It started, you look really great for your 30s. Then it's like, but wow, man, you are really on a downward slope, dude. I am too. Yeah, but you can just shave your beard and you go back to baby face. <laughs> It's not fair! It looks horrible, though. It doesn't... Uh, well... <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, you know what? I'm going after it because <laughs> this is this is payback time, baby. All right. Your face looks horrible enough that you have to hide behind it. <laughs> Bam! That's right! Screw you, dick! <laughs> I may be old, but at least I can show my face. Where is it? I wonder if I can find it. There's the Instagram <laughs> post from... When I had to shave for that video that we didn't get to release? Yeah, I know. The, oh, the comments on there are hilarious. I know, they're so bad. I think there's people that, like, legitimately think I'm a different person. Okay, but you know what, though? In your defense, I think part of why... <laughs> I think part of why it doesn't work for you, though, is because your hairdo is kind of like... You have, like, kind of a choir boy... I think it did better boy. when I had, like, the yeah. spikes. You have a choir boy hairdo, but then you offset it with the kind of rugged yeah. facial hair. Yeah. So when you have, like... The no facial hair, and then you just have like the nice kind of yeah. You, you just you go kind of like yeah, kind of choir boy. Yeah. Um, I think when I had when I had the spikes, or when I just had like the faux hawk kind of deal, or just short hair in general, I think it I think it did a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we were supposed to talk about the trip to New York. Okay, yes. so here's what went down. Okay. Um, I have never been invited to a Samsung launch event before. This is the first time. Oh, because you've just had like the meetings. Yeah, so I've yeah. had meetings with like Samsung Canada. Yeah. Where I'll go to like a hotel in Vancouver or a restaurant one time and I'll get briefed on the phone. And <laughs> a lot of the time, this is like a week or two after. Yes. Like the unpacked event. And Marquez and Jonathan Morrison and Austin, all those guys like have full reviews up. And I'm getting briefed and I'm seeing the device for the first time because, get this, because it's just launching in Canada now. Yeah. Which as is though like I should, super stupid. As though I should give any cares when it launches in Canada. Nobody cares when a device launches in Canada. And the kind of stuff they'll cover at these briefings is great. They're like, yeah, and the blue color is going to be available exclusively on Rogers. Why I did that, but uh, okay. <laughs> someone will find out from the video that they're interested in the phone. Go to rogers.com and be like, "Oh, there's blue," and they'll buy it. Cool. Or and they'll, then they'll slap a skin on it, anyways. Or they'll never go to rogers.com and never know that they had a blue one and not care. Yeah. In all likelihood, if, yeah. we're, if we're being honest right the now, vast, so, vast percentage of people. So yeah. that's what always, would always happen. So I was super stoked to get an invite to the Samsung Unpacked event because that meant that I could actually do a hands-on video at the same time that the and every other press in the world, mind you, The Verge had an article or had a video up <laughs> while Austin and I were sitting there at the audience, going, "Why do we even attend these things? <laughs> like honestly, <sighs> why, why are we even? Why are we even here? What's the point?" Um, but that's a whole other conversation. Um, the Verge had a video. So they, so they, in, so they invited me up, and I was like, "Oh, this is great! Yeah, I'd love to go do it." Um, you know, you want to build that relationship. I want to, I want to be timely on mobile stuff if I can at all manage to do it. And then I'm like, "Okay, yeah." So we need two tickets, me and a camera person, which I think is fairly reasonable for a publication of yeah. our impact. And they're like, "Oh, sorry, um, we, you can't bring a camera person." And I'm like. Okay, well, can I just pay for their ticket and pay for their hotel or even just share a room? Like, I don't care. Like, most of the camera people here, I'm buddy buddy enough with that we could just share a room, no problem. Um, and then they're like, no, we can't get you another ticket for the event. 
So even if I brought my own camera person there, you can't get them inside. They could only get me one one ticket into the event because again, it's because I'm going through Samsung Canada. Samsung Canada had 12 tickets for the entire country. I was I was going as far as like is this like a fire marshal issue? Like they literally can't bring more people into the building. Or... It was full, but the okay. problem is that Canada's allocation was so little of it. Right. That so Austin had three people there because, but he didn't get his hotel and flight paid for and he didn't get like, there was this activation after where- Why did he need three people? I was supposed to have, like, get this. I was supposed to have two to $3,000 to go experience New York with the Note 8. And they were like, yeah, you could do like a chopper flight or you could do this, you could do, I didn't end up doing anything because I was busy editing my stupid video that I shot that day, so I didn't even end up using it. But it was oh, like, man. you guys you guys have all this like influencer budget, but I can't bring a camera person to the event with me, come on. So Austin didn't have that because that was just something Samsung Canada was doing. But this just all leads back to like a, a, a larger fundamental issue, which is how fragmented, yeah. yes. Yeah. Where one company, <clears throat> Samsung, okay, they have The Verge going live with- I don't know why hashtag free Luke is being spammed. I don't, I don't know what, what it is. means. So they have the <laughs> one company has The Verge going live with a preview. Yeah. While the entire rest of the world press- Which has like astronomically more views than the rest of the stuff in their channel. While the entire rest of the world press is sitting in an auditorium waiting for the presentation to start. They've got um, the US and Canada and whatever other countries with Wonko allocations for press. They've got, and, and they've got completely different programs for, I would consider myself and Austin pretty similar in terms of what we are. YouTubers, influencers, like we fall in the same category and he's gotta buy his flight, buy his hotel, but he can get as many tickets as he wants. I get a free flight, free hotel, and a few grand to spend on doing something cool in New York, but I can't bring a camera operator. Yeah. So, so it's just all over the place. Um, and I just, I feel like somewhere, at some point. What could have even been be sort better. of interesting is if they gave you like one of those phone gyro things and like you were able to bring an editor yeah. and they got you to like film the whole thing on the phone. Yeah. And they like gave you a phone to talk about and display, and they give you a phone to film with. Yeah. And you're able to bring an editor so they could actually edit the video. Exactly. That would be pretty neat. And the other thing too, though, is consistency. Like, I, no one's going to be upset if everyone's kind of doing the same thing. Yeah. Uh, but like, honestly, and I don't mean. I hope she. I, I sincerely doubt she's watching. But there was another person in the media, uh, on the media side of the presentation, that was sincerely taking notes from the presentation on a little pad of paper and wrote down like 10 things. And I'm kind of sitting here going like, how, how are you even covering this? Like, what are you, are you gonna fold that up, tie it to a pigeon and mail it to someone? Like, like what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing such I've taken, that you are- I've taken written notes before. Such that you are relevant enough to be here and that you're, yeah, but she wasn't, it wasn't a speed thing. Because she didn't even write my anything. Okay, and she was yeah. sitting right in front of me. And I'm sitting here going, what could you possibly be doing that doesn't require you to digitize this at some point? Yeah. One of the things that I like about paper notes, and I know this isn't what you're saying. I'm just, we, ha we have to talk a lot today because we have no news. So I'm going for it. Yeah, hit um, it. Is, is that it's kind of like the one note idea. If I had like a Surface book that I had folded okay. back with a pen, then sure. But that's, I don't have that, what, no. <laughs> stop. <laughs> so like I can stop partway through and draw something or do whatever I need to okay, do. Okay, she drew nothing. Is, and the notepad yeah. was like this big. See, that's and, like, crazy. Really hard to See, like, I normally use. have big ones like this. And we're sitting in a dark auditorium because it's like a that's presentation. Stupid. Yeah. Anytime that I've sat down at a presentation, if I had the option, I did laptop or even phone. But if I'm like being walked around a booth really quickly, I often just write. Right. So, you know, right tool for the job, and I totally get that, but it was just like, uh, like why are you even here? Yeah. Um, so what else, we, uh, what else we got for today, actually? Oh, oh, uh, why don't we talk about, is Floatplane dying? Is Floatplane dying? I don't, I don't even understand, no. Okay. 
Is that it? Yeah, that was it. In other okay. news, are we going to finally move to OBS? Because my uh, laptop screen capture is still not working. Why don't you talk about pros and cons while I see if I can figure this out? Okay, so uh, if people have watched my little stream, I don't know if I've ever talked about it on the WAN show, but I've done quite a few different attempts of moving off of XSplit to OBS because the amount of ring that happens from everybody about how OBS is so much better because it's open source uh, convinced me to try it a few, t a few times, and I decided that I didn't like it every single time until recently, and I'm sure I'm going to receive an email about this or a tweet or something, uh, but I've been having a huge amount of problems with XSplit, and I'm not the only one. And a lot of them have to do with capture cards and other different types of things that we're trying to use, and I'm getting feedback from these companies that make these devices that it just doesn't work on XSplit. And they're blaming XSplit, and they're refusing to do anything about it, so... Like, I'm pretty sure the Stream Deck doesn't work on XSplit. And we've had tons yeah. of problems with yep, it, right? Had issues with yeah, it. so the Stream Deck. Uh, Wait, I don't know. Uh, what just happened? Oh, dear. Oh, crap. Did you unplug the SDI one? Uh, maybe. Hold on. Well, we oh. theoretically still have audio, so I'm just gonna oh. keep talking, because you don't really need to see me anyways. Dang it! Um, so, continuing from there, I wanted to play Horizon Zero Dawn, and I couldn't. So I started trying to look into OBS, and man, there's been some leaps and bounds in terms of how good and functional OBS is. And it's still, in my opinion, a very clunky UI. I think they have made a number of objectively terrible uh, design decisions, but functionality-wise, it does really well. The transcoder stuff, it does, it does well with. The audio levels, the audio stuff on XSplit is just... Uh, why there's just like a volume bar that you can change the level of and like a tiny, very hard to see level bounce that's just on the bottom of the volume bar, not in its own area, very difficult to see, is completely beyond me. And OBS has individual levels for all your things that are very easy to see all the time. That's wonderful. There's some really clunky things about it, but it works very well in terms of the back-end stuff. And we use Epifan AVIO capture cards because they're wonderful and they don't like overheat and do other junky things that a lot of other capture cards that we've used have done. Um, but they have compatibility issues with XSplit. And they talking kind of came up over the last little while. Like yes. They didn't used to. Yeah, it's, it seems to be new. Um, and that's very frustrating. So, yeah. Moving off of something that is theoretically paid for to something that is free, because the free thing is better, is just odd. Um, well, I it's hope not that I hope XSplit figures it age, out. But yeah. Okay, so uh, this next news item is actually from my email. So hopefully I don't expose anything critical, but it doesn't look like it. Crash plan for home is going away. Thank you for using Crash Plan for Home. We hope you have enjoyed the secure backup that the free version of Crash Plan for Home has provided. As of today, we've made the decision to shift our business strategy to focus on the enterprise and small business segments. Wow. So this kind of sucks because Crash Plan was like the go-to for quick, painless, easy off-site backup of your entire system. So in, in theory, and you know, there's some port forwarding and whatever else that goes along with it, but in theory, crash plan was as simple as going, okay, here's all the stuff I wanna back up. Here's my buddy's crash plan code. Click, and then it would send over an encrypted version of all of that stuff in like an encrypted container file so that in the event that you had some kind of a catastrophic system failure, you would be able to at the very least back up all of your all of your precious memories and all that. And you 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 didn't necessarily even have to trust the person on the other side. You just had to have enough of a working relationship with them that you'd be able to get physical access to the data at some point, or even back it up online if you, uh, if you didn't have so much that it would take like weeks to download or whatever the case may be. So as long as you, you didn't even have to trust each other, you just had to have like a, a bilateral agreement yeah. that kind of goes, hey, I'll have some extra storage at my place, you have some extra storage at your place, we'll back up to each other, boom, done. Um, 
And right now, I'm not 100% sure exactly what we're going to um, switch well, it says or it what I'm going to switch to. small business, so what does that mean? Well, How that, much does that cost? I'm using this personally, though, and small business is, I believe, I, I forget, but it's like a significant cost per device. Okay. Yeah, So it, and it really is priced like a small business solution. Um, click to get crash plan for small business. Here we go. So let's have a look at what we got here. So I'm in a bit of a better spot because way back now, to be completely honest, I got that Synology NAS. Yep. And I can Synology to Synology yes. mirror, which is actually quite nice. There's other things you can do too on your own, um, but, but nothing this, that's as elegant as this. And this was like the cross-platform thing. Cause yeah. you could, so I could use it on a Windows desktop and I could be backing up to a crash plan Docker container on an Unraid server, for example. Mm -hmm. So that was super cool. Um, but yeah, no, here we go. It's $10 per device per month. Wow. For the business one. Yeah, so it's 120 bucks a year. And what kind of sucks about this, it says you can migrate all your cloud backups, something, something. Yeah, I don't think, it, yeah, it does not support computer to computer backups anymore. So that super sucks because that was the whole that was the whole reason why I would use CrashPlan because it's going from thing I own to thing that I own or is like a thing my friend owns instead of relying on, you know, some corporation somewhere to keep all of this stuff safe. Like I like the idea of having everything on my servers and especially not having to pay extra for more cloud storage if I have a bunch of crap I want to back up. Uh, like if I have a gigabit internet connection at my office, I would love to be able to just Flood it. And they're not going to like... So what happens if you've already got this stuff set up? Because isn't this local software? It is local software. Um, I believe, though, that the... They can just can it remotely? Yeah, I believe they can can it because the way that friends are tracked is through, through authentication through the software. Okay. Yeah, so it's not something where you just point it at an IP and it just goes. Okay. Yeah, so maybe they maybe they've had this in the plan for a long time. Uh, maybe maybe the people who are smarter than me are gonna go find some version that you can kind of roll back to where it all works or something like that. I'm not sure, but in the meantime, um, I'm definitely gonna be looking for some other kind of solution, and that's pretty frustrating. Um, Scroll all the way down. All the way down. All the way down. All the way to the bottom. Almost right there. Sponsors. Up a little bit. Up a bit. Right Half-Life 3. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Nope, actually not. So this was originally posted on the forum by N2A Newt. <sighs> and uh, let's go ahead and just kind of, wow, that is that super was way duper too much. broken. There you go. Um, that looks pretty good. So Half-Life 2 Episode 3's story released by... Mark Laidlaw, the lead yeah. writer for the Half-Life series, who left Valve last year. Wow. I have a feeling this could get him in a lot of trouble. I really hope he's sought out legal I, counsel. Yeah, I hope he's lawyered this. up, man. Um, wow, that's pretty crazy. If so you want to read GitHub. it, it's on GitHub, and I believe it's in like quite a few other places as well. It's on Pastebin. Uh, because people are worried about it being brought down, which is not surprising at all. Um, apparently, it wraps up a lot of loose ends. It's essentially Half-Life 2 Episode 3. Um, yeah. Wow. Apparently, it, the corrected versions where it like fixes the genders and fixes a few words that he like changed that can't be enough to save him at all but whatever, um, is like a very coherent and plausible plot line. So it's from a fictional character named Gertie Fremont. Yeah, but if you change yeah. that. Yeah, who recounts her team up with feisty partner Alex Vaunt to find the Hyperborea luxury liner, which must be, uh, yeah, so... Wow. So he's like probably going to get owned. I really like. Ugh. So there's no way of knowing whether this was a finalized plot line. We have no way of yeah. knowing how far into development Half Life yeah. 2 Episode 3 This could be ever a first got. draft. Yep. Um, 
But apparently, he was the primary architect of Half-Life's plot, and his departure from Valve last year was widely seen as acknowledgement that Episode 3 was completely dead. So maybe, if I can speculate wildly without looking into anything that this guy has said publicly at all, because sure, we don't have a lot it. of notes I on mean, it. It's just the WAN show anyway. Um, yeah, Who why cares? not, right? Let's just Fake YOLO news. it. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So yeah, fake news warning. Yeah. Um, but I would, I would assume that maybe this is like he's the main architect for the plot. It said yep. that right there. This is probably like his masterpiece. Right. So while he might get screwed for this, maybe he just doesn't care. Yeah. Because like if you created this and like the whole internet is like we want it so bad. Yeah. And it's like the greatest work you've done. I don't know. I don't know what else he's worked on. Yeah, I mean, I can see how someone would feel like that. Like, But Half-Life is amazing, so that would be, like, an amazing thing to be the greatest thing you've done. I done. mean, I'll tell you something. Like, we've considered just going live with the Channel Super Fun uh, Top Gun uh, Shot for Shot Volleyball Scene Recreation and just taking the copyright strike just so that people can watch it. Like, having it up there for long enough that some people can watch it before it yeah. gets ripped down because like they're not going to delete our channel no realistically we're not a big enough target to get sued into oblivion by no. uh what is it columbia pictures and if we do what we just give them all the profits from the video can't remember well no no they you know, there's more to it than yeah, that there's more to it than that but like realistically they're not gonna they're not gonna put a target on their own back by like trying to shut down I like to think a fairly, you know, beloved YouTube creator company. Like, yeah. like the amount of public backlash over suing us into a creator, over us just doing a fan yeah. remake of a scene from one of their movies. Like, come on. It seems it seems very implausible. At Did some people point, like it at LTX? Yeah. 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 Like at some point before an actual lawsuit occurs some human looks at something and makes a decision as to whether or not to proceed with it and it's not necessarily as simple as the black and white of law yeah it's like is this worth the pr is this worth the cost is this worth the effort yeah and like that to but like what you just said just to dive further into this topic that yeah. i know nothing about yeah um could be a reason why valve might not go for this guy Valve is the, like, dream child of all the PC gamers. But remember, too, and, okay, less so these days, for one thing. Fair. And if you don't protect your IP, then you will be seen as soft, and you could open yourself up to this kind of leak all the time. Yeah. No, and all of a sudden, Valve, who might not have a ton of employees, but in terms of revenues Massive. and profits, is a gigantic company. I, uh... No, I, I think I think they actually have no choice but to go after him as hardcore as they can. Like if honestly, that sucks. If I was them, I would do it. Just because you can't set a precedent like that. And you can't have someone you can't make it okay for that to happen because someone might actually come out with a game with Gertie Fremont and Alex Vaunt. Yep. That is like the exact thing. Like here. And let's, call it like quarter lifespan three. Let's draw a parallel, right? Um, so let's say that um, let's say that you decided to quit or something like that. Get owned. Um, yeah, I know you're like half halfway out the door already, but <laughs> the point is, let's say you decided yeah, yeah, to Yeah, like what what like three months or something? Yeah. <laughs> let's say you decided to quit. And as the last thing that you did, you went around the office and you grabbed your Scrapyard Wars PC. Yeah. And um, let's just let's just try and think of like some. You know what? There. That's that's a. I was gonna say the bomb, but that's the, the bomb's kind of yours already anyway. Like I think the Plasti Dip on it is mine. Yeah, it's not even Plasti Dip. Yeah. Yes. But the, the paint belongs to me. And, well, the plastic. You can take the whole middle section. Yeah, the whole middle section. Yeah. Yeah. But but let's say the Scrapyard Wars PC, where indisputably Linus Media Group paid for oh, it. Oh, yeah, no, that's... yeah. And it was created on work time, which yeah. your employee agreement states that the things you create are the intellectual property of this company. Yeah, no, that's, that's works. Which I'm 100%. sure he has a very similar agreement in place. Certain. So let's say that you took off with it, and you were like... I'm not giving this back. 
I would have no choice, even though I don't actually care. And yeah. as far as I'm concerned, you can have it. Because that would be... I didn't give you permission. Yeah. You just and took couldn't it. couldn't that then be used against you if someone else does it? Possibly, yes. Because you set a precedent that this is okay. Yes. And that could be seen as like a benefit of working here or something Or something. Like that. Either way, I'm creating the potential for this to come back and become a problem. And yeah. honestly, in this case, the stakes are even so much lower than someone, you know, leaking the plot of an oh, unreleased yeah. game. Oh, yeah, definitely. But that's That's taking some property and like displaying it in my house probably. Yeah. The other thing would be taking property and giving it to everyone. That's right. That would be like taking a video that we never released that I made. Yeah. And giving it to everyone on my own channels later. Yep. Where even if you had no intention of profiting from it, this is something that a lot of people don't necessarily understand is the definition of profit does not necessarily come down to the money that Luke makes. Like let's say yeah. that Luke took it and did a, a stream on his Twitch channel where he specifically Apparently took- Apparently the NDA expired. So is the argument here that the statute of limitations is up? Because it's been a year or something like that. Well, his NDA, yeah, his NDA from working there has apparently. So there's expired. a difference between that's very, yeah, an NDA and intellectual property, yeah, and stealing into and disclosing something that's under a disclosure agreement. Because if he was agreement. like, yeah. if, if, if he was like, I had a fully written script for Half Life Two Episode Three, that would be a, a perfect example NDA. of something that would be NDA'd but not intellectual property. Um, so anyway, so back like to literally the script back to the example Let's say Luke decided that for that stream all the money that came in was gonna go to a charity or he was gonna turn off monetization um, For the video where he displayed that video. Yeah um, He still profits in the sense that if even if I can prove that even a single person went and watched that stream who wouldn't have otherwise he profited off of the thing that didn't belong to him that he stole from Linus Media Group in the sense that he gained notoriety. People like, are saying get John. I didn't, uh, yeah, we could go get John, actually. Uh, he's, uh, he's upstairs. We can, you know what? Why don't we come back to this topic a little bit, uh, a little bit later in the stream? I want to say two things before we get John yeah. here so that like, everyone remembers so we can bring this up. One, some people are comparing this to H3H3. That's not what? it at all. No, it's not That's even content that was released by someone else that was used in minor form for parody. Completely, drastically different situation. Yeah. Um, and another one, this would be sort of comparable to someone working at like DreamWorks mm -hmm. and they make a bunch of like internal animations and different yep. shorts and yep. all this different kind of stuff that they don't get to completion and then they quit and then a year later they just release all of these publicly. Yeah. That's, we'll okay. get John here, but yeah. I'm like pretty damn John will be certain. down. I feel Not pretty good that. about the position that I've taken on it, but hey, he could always come in and tell me I'm wrong. In the meantime, yeah. uh, why don't we do our It's also sponsors. America, so the laws are like slightly different. Uh, what do we got for, oh wow. You know what's funny is we actually thought we didn't have a lot of topics this week, but we've got a fair bit that we still have a fair bit to talk about. So let's, uh, let's get through this. Fresh what? books. Are you a, uh, wait, what? Uh, what, we can uh, do that. We'll oh, get, we'll get, we'll oh, get cool. back to it. Yeah. Okay, fresh books. So if you're a small business owner or a freelancer, uh, let's say you do construction on the side, or even you do it as your full-time job, house yeah. painting, uh, you teach yoga classes out of your garage, you do small-time computer repair or IT work for local offices, whatever it is you do, fresh books is all about giving you the tools to make your organization, your billing, and your accounting way simpler. And expenses, which is a thing that a lot of new businesses don't take take proper advantage of. Tracking expenses is something that can be very tedious and complicated, but FreshBooks, because it comes with you on the go, it's available for iOS and Android, allows you to just track everything as you go, so at the end of the week, you're not sitting there you know, spending a bunch of time creating invoices. You can create invoices in, in seconds. So you're not spending a bunch of time going, oh, how much did I work on that job? Which days was it? And then you end up in an argument with the client about like, you know, uh, it's it's stupid. Yeah. FreshBooks allows you to keep track of all that stuff, and if you have any questions, they're there to help. You pick up the phone, you call FreshBooks, a human picks up the line and helps you out with it. FreshBooks is one of the only sponsors that we've ever worked with where I have never seen a complaint yeah. that was not resolved 
in a timely manner by FreshBooks. These guys are freaking awesome. And if you're a small business owner and you want to simplify your accounting, go check them out at freshbooks.com slash when and enter when in the how did you hear about us section. In other news, our Savage Jerky offer has changed. Do we have one in here? So Savage Jerky, super delicious. Um, I'm gonna grab the, uh, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm just not, I'm just not gonna do the spicy today. I My, think we'll chill out today. I'm just, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna take it easy. The cracked pepper and sea salt's delicious. I love the, uh... You're gonna go for sweet uh, sriracha barbecue. What's that green one that I really like? Moho. Um, yeah, just moho. Uh, moho? Is it's it just, just moho. moho? Yeah. Yeah, that one's freaking delicious. The uh, the maple bacon one's really good. Traditional's very good. Uh, traditional's really good. They've got lots of great flavors. Um, jerky's made with the best ingredients without nitrates or preservatives. And they wanted to create a snack that was full of flavor and spice without being bad for you. They've got 13 different flavors, and they also make barbecue sauce, hot sauce, and a spice oh. rub. Interesting. Use offer code LTT to save 10% on all their products and <laughs> hit it. For all orders placed this weekend, Sa Savage Jerky will include a kazooie or a sticker. A koozie. A koozie? Mm hmm Oh, I thought it was a, that makes a lot more sense. A koozie or sticker with each order placed using our code. BAM! So check them out. Code LTT. Over at genie.us slash savage jerky and use offer code LTT to save 10% on savage jerky. All right. John, get in here. You can take my spot. We're talking about the, uh, the Half-Life 3 plot we can just We can just make a... Have you heard about middle. this? I have not. Heard have you seen this? this? Have you heard about this? Okay. Okay. Why don't you actually look at it? while we do one more, one more topic, yeah. and then you yeah. can come back and use talk my to laptop. Us about it. Are we looking at it again? Use my laptop. Yeah. Okay. In the meantime, I want to jump into one of our right other in topics the middle here. Of the screen. Someone messed with me. Someone put a spicy one in the cracked pepper and sea salt. <laughs> and it's delicious as usual, but <laughs> I have the hiccups now because I wasn't expecting it. <laughs> that wasn't me. That actually wasn't me. I wouldn't be surprised if it was Ivan. Did Jack you hear his asses. plan? Jackasses everywhere. <laughs> What's his plan? His plan was to like uh, have a whole bunch in a line. You don't know which one's the spicy one, and it's like roulette. Oh lordy. We should do that as a channel super fun. Another kind of a fun channel super fun. Beef jerky roulette. All right. This was originally posted over on Ars Technica, and Intel's not really hiding it, but. They recently launched 8th generation mobile chips. And the, um, the assumption, I think, from a lot of people, even fairly tech savvy people, I assumed this, the assumption was that an 8th generation mobile chip would be Coffee Lake, which is their upcoming architecture. Nope. These quad core, dang it. These quad core U-class mobile chips, which by the, by the way, is pretty freaking sick. So base clocks of anywhere from 1.6 to 1.9 gigahertz <laughs> and boost clocks of 3.4 to 3.9 gigahertz at four core cores <laughs> with, and these are all 15 watt parts are pretty darn impressive and are gonna enable a completely new class of mobile device. <laughs> like I'm really looking forward to see if LG does a 2018 gram with these processors, right? Yeah, or or something like it, because a quad core <laughs> is really the only thing I'm missing. You've already got an NVMe SSD. You've already got 16 gigs plus of RAM. So the one thing missing is more multi-threading performance, and they're even hyper-threaded. So we're talking four cores, eight threads. Okay. <laughs> these things look sick. Unfortunately, this is not nearly the shift that we were possibly. At Expecting, they are built on a somewhat refined version of Intel's 14 nanometer manufacturing process. And even though they're calling them 8th gen, they are actually much more similar, both CPU and GPU, to, to the 7th generation Kaby Lake. So they're calling these Kaby Lake Refresh, which, if my experience is anything to go on, basically means Kaby Lake. Yeah. Um, and it's frustrating because the whole idea Probably behind. Probably Lake with like a better under understanding of their binning. Yeah. The whole idea, and it, well, Intel is iterating all the time. So it's yeah. KB Lake refresh, but they're probably already using all the things they learned in other KB Lake chips as it is, mm -hmm. because they are making changes over time. Fair. Um, sorry, John, we're almost ready for you. Sorry. Um, 
But it's frustrating because the whole idea behind this gen thing is you're supposed to be able to understand what generation the freaking thing is architecturally. And now we've got seventh generation processors on the HEDT side that are Skylake based. We've got seventh generation processors on the mainstream side that are KB Lake based. And then we've got eighth generation processors that are KB Lake based. Is nothing sacred? No. So, um, yeah. Uh, oh, but to be clear, the HEDT ones I'm talking about are like the 7900X. So that, because it has a seven, it's seventh gen, but yeah. it is actually a sixth generation Skylake architecture. So now there's gonna have to be like the Intel version and there's gonna have to be like the enthusiast who has, who's keeping track of this on their own version of what gen everything is. All right, so let's I feel let- like we're gonna um, need another tech wiki video. Let's let John jump in and talk about this whole Half-Life 3 thing. I'll give you my spot. Do you have to leave? No, I'm not going anywhere. Here we go. Okay. So, Half-Life 3. How does, how does this work? Because we think, Linus and I are both in agreement right now, mm -hmm. that so, some people in the chat are saying like, oh, his NDA lifted. But we don't think this is an NDA thing. Mm -mm. In our opinion, it would be covered under NDA if he was just like, I had completed a script for Half-Life uh, 2 Episode 3. And that's all he says. That seems like an NDA style thing. Him actually releasing all the content does not seem like an NDA protected action. I mean, NDAs can be written pretty broadly though, yeah. You can you can write an NDA. So what? Right, but what we're saying is like, um, people are saying that the NDA has lifted because he hasn't worked there for a year. Mm -hmm. So he's released this content, not being a employee of Valve anymore, mm -hmm. and people are saying that he's fine because the NDA lifted. Does that make any sense? Uh, it does. Okay. Um, Sorry, if I seem a little bit confused. You seem very confused. Well, no, it's it's more that um, <laughs> I don't, I can't really think of a reason why that wouldn't make sense, honestly. Okay. You have, so if I work you know, at Linus Tech Tips, and we make a series of videos called Scrapyard Wars, mm -hmm. and we make Scrapyard <laughs> yeah, Wars. Just a hypothetical here. <laughs> we make Scrapyard Wars episode seven, and Ed finishes editing them, but then Linus hates me, so fires me and doesn't want to release the episodes anymore because he wants nothing to do with me, and I have all the copies of the episodes, and I release them somewhere else because my NDA expired. How does that make any sense? Uh, well, you're covering different things with an NDA versus just a separate agreement saying that you don't own copyright in it. But this is, this is content. Like, did you actually see the post? I read the bullet points below it. <laughs> Not, yeah, no, this is what he released. Which is like the script. So he like changed the, well it's like it's a letter from one character to another and the names and places have been changed. But it's extremely obvious. But like mm -hmm. Gordon Freeman is uh, what, Gerda, uh, Gerda something? Gertie uh, Fremont. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or Fremont or something. So wouldn't a okay. storyline be considered IP? And wouldn't that be covered separately from an NDA? You could cover it under both. Okay. There's no, I don't, I don't see a reason you couldn't do that, so. So do you think it's possible that he's off the hook here? Is he in trouble with sense. Valve? Is Valve- No like, one knows. No one knows yet. We're trying to figure out if he's in trouble with Valve. Yeah. I feel like Valve <sighs> wouldn't construct their NDA in a way that makes it so that you can just release whatever you worked on after you leave for a year. I don't know why anyone would ever do that. Mm -hmm. That makes no sense. It could be, but like I was saying, you could. It could be under. It could be covered under something else that isn't an NDA. So even if they say, even, even if they structure something that says right, but we're talking about if it's not covered, not if it is covered. Uh. Okay, so you're you're asking me if this isn't covered by an NDA. Yeah, I'm not asking you if it's covered by this. other things. We don't know. We don't know. There's no information about that at all. All we're, we we're know. Speculating what the likelihood is mm -hmm. that he's yeah. okay here. Based on what? Based on because 
that he, you're, revealed, you're asking. That he yeah. revealed the plot line mm -hmm. of something that he was working on at Valve and is therefore the intellectual property of Valve mm -hmm. after leaving. I mean, I have no way to say. Like, it, it, it completely depends on, like, how much Valve values this information, so... And who knows if they do or not? You know, or, or they, you know, were they actually go planning to release a sequel or not? So, right. hmm. interesting. Okay, I had thought, uh, I had thought it'd be a little more open and shut than that. Like, I, well, we're making some assumptions. We're making assumptions that Valve is going to aggressively protect its intellectual property, regardless of whether mm -hmm. it mattered or not. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it sets kind of a bad precedent if they yeah. just let people walk away with this stuff. Well, I mean. <sighs> You're right in that it probably would be considered IP. Like you're, you're, you are probably right about that. But like at the same time, is if you're going to sit here and ask, oh, how much trouble is he possibly in? Yeah, impossible to say. It really depends on what Valve wants to do. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Thank you. Yep. So, so oh. it, it sounds like we weren't that far off. We were just making kind of a different set of assumptions about how we think Valve would behave. Yeah. That may or may not be right. So we're just going to have to wait and see how this one shakes out, according to... Apparently, um, he has released a tweet. I don't know where it went. I lost the click. Sure. Why don't you have a look while I uh, jump in and talk about the uh, Vega shortage? Okay. So this was originally posted over on videocards.com. Um, and actually, there's a post by Coaxial Gamer over on the forum. And the original article there is from pcgamesn.com. But apparently, the Vega shortage could last until October in spite of AMD's efforts to keep RX Vega prices low. So uh, this is from video cards. According to <clears throat> well-informed sources of DigiTimes, you should not expect to find RX Vega in stores, at least at a normal price, until October. While AMD promised to prepare a high, to prepare a high volume of RX Vega graphics cards for launch, the reality was that many countries apparently did not receive a single unit of the new flagship card. The problem allegedly lies in the complexity of the Vega chips. Other sources claim that this issue may lie in advanced semiconductor engineering packaging technology. If I had to guess, and this would be pure speculation, I would say it probably has a lot to do with HBM2. And maybe not necessarily even the amount of HBM2 that AMD can buy, but possibly as much as that to do with AMD simply not wanting to buy that much HBM2 right now, because right now they're one of the only ones using it. So if they put in a massive order, they would themselves inherently spike the pricing of yeah. something that is a very limited commodity. And that just, you can, I mean, anyone can look at this on DRAM exchange, something that went up drastically in price in the couple of weeks before RX Vega's official launch. So if I was AMD, I would be probably trying to ride it out until another competitor starts building HBM2, which is supposedly going to happen fairly soon. And I would be, um, yeah, I, like I wouldn't be going out of my way to produce a bunch of cards that I'm maybe not even making money on. I'm yeah. just, I'm speculating though. Yeah, no, um, that's fair. Uh, one thing I want to add, I found, I found the tweet. He tweeted saying, my website's down for now. I guess a fanfic is popular, even a gender-swapped snapshot of a dream I had many years ago. So is that him backpedaling on I don't even how, know. how because overt he wants to be about this? Did he forward pedal at all, or did the internet just freak out? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, it could be a case of I that. I kind of think it's probably fairly not a big deal. And I'm gonna make another wild assumption based on no information, um, because fake news is really fun. Wan show, man. Um, but my idea here is that it's on his own website. His pinned tweet is him trying to sell books that he's written. He's trying to sell books that he's written. An easy way to get a whole bunch of traffic to his website, which did happen, and to get more interest around him and his books, is so if the right it had on the thing that he if wrote. it legitimately had nothing to do with any kind of planet valve, then I think it's fine. Because I believe fanfic is, like, okay. I think you're allowed to do that. And letting the internet go full conspiracy theory is a great marketing tactic. I don't know how long Interesting. it took until he clarified it. Right. I like your new theory. 
I like that one the most. Um, okay, in other news, uh, this was from PCGamesN.com. AMD says they're trying to keep prices of RX Vega low, though. So after the prices inflated after launch, AMD now says it's trying its best to get those prices to where we suggested when we launched them. So there, AMD's uh, Gerald Youngblood says our SEP, so that's suggested prices, and the price tag that we announced is our full intention of where we would suggest the product be priced, not just for launch, but ongoing. They said the price surged due to overwhelming demand and that the filling of retailers inventory is key to getting the prices of Vega down to their original pre-launch levels. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, but again, so we're looking at AMD having to, um, having to put pressure on retailers, which a lot of the time manifests as like a rebate or something. And you know, that whole thing broke a little while ago. We expressed our frustration with yep, it. Yep. Again, this is more evidence for AMD not really having um, much motivation to provide as much Vega as they possibly can right now. Yeah. Because here's what you guys need to understand. AMD does not profit from the mining craze and from the prices being jacked up $200 on the shelf. The retailer and or the uh, opportunistic reseller who runs out to a store whenever they find it at regular price and then flips it on eBay, they profit. AMD doesn't want that because they're effectively creating a bunch of hate in their community and a bunch of anger and they don't even get to make more money out of it. Yeah. So, so you, you shouldn't really think about this emotionally. You have to think about it rationally. It's, it's not in AMD's best interest unless they are actually raising the price of the product Which to, is have, piss everyone off. to have the street price be high. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I've talked to them. Um, I can't share everything that was shared with me, but I'll say benefit of the doubt. Um, I still, and you can go back and watch last week's WAN show if you want to know what I'm upset about. I'm still upset about pretty much all of it. Uh, AMD could have done a way better job of communicating the way that they were handling this launch pricing. Because if they had told me that it was going to be through rebates, I would have known that the entire thing was going to be a cluster. And this is, okay, so this is a situation where, like, I've never been on the other end. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. There's unknown variables here. But sometimes the communication stuff that happens directed towards us from a wide variety of companies, I'm not even going to narrow down to AMD right now, yeah. is just very not good. Yeah. And it doesn't seem that hard. Well, it seems hard when you make things hard on yourself. So a lot of the miscommunication around Vega had to do with that they originally were gonna just lift the embargo on Vega 64, the flagship card, and then at the last second decided to lift the embargo on so Vega 56. So don't do that. Right, but think about it this way. It's not the people who are actually in the trenches with Nvidia card in their right hand and upcoming AMD card in their left hand, testing them against each other, who like actually know how this whole thing's gonna shake down and how the press is gonna react to it. It's not those people making the decision, unfortunately. Okay. It's probably some executive making the decision and then ultimately, <sighs> and I told you so moment that takes place, once the hardware is already in the hands of the reviewers and they get some initial feedback that, hey, this isn't gonna be a super positive review because hey, Vega 64 is n not crazy competitive. Like it's, it's not a game changer, guys. Um, so some, some executive who's in La La Land probably got that feedback and made, was like, okay, fine, let's do it your way. Let's launch the one that actually makes sense, Vega 56, at the same time so we don't end up with a bunch of negative press to lose our momentum. That's probably how it went down, and I'm speculating. I told you guys I had a call with AMD. That was definitely not confirmed or talked about, but that's what I would guess went on. Um, and that's how these things keep happening, because it was the same bloody thing with Ryzen 7. Originally, they were going to roll out the SKUs two weeks apart, and then at the last second, they're like, oh, no, we're lifting the embargo on all of them, and only a handful of press actually got them all, someone because the they chat, couldn't get them to us in time. Someone in the chat was like, okay, I don't, I don't know where the message is, so I'm going to verbatim this, and I'm going to get a little bit of it wrong. Sorry. But someone in the chat said something along the lines of, um, yeah, but you were just blinded by wanting the profits of releasing the video on launch day. I don't think that's valid personally. I wasn't a part of the video creation process for that, but from my view, I don't think it's being blinded 
when to be able to see that, you would have had to make extremely wild, drastic assumptions that wouldn't have made any sense in the moment. Um, yeah, and it has... That would have been very a very weird thing to assume. Here's the thing, is I think people underestimate how much profit there is in having a video up um, a day or two earlier for us. I the mean, main issue from what I heard, yeah. and like again, the reason why I keep on putting this in is because I'm yeah. actually outside of the circle, but the main issue that I heard was that we had a completed video yeah, we did. That would have been a problem if we released. Yeah. Because now there was new information. It so was, we were correcting a problem. We were a com we were completely done our Vega 64 launch video with the air cooled and the liquid cooled card. Someone says LTT is totally sellout. We do sponsor spots. Yeah, of we, do we do ads. We yep. work with companies, but we are very transparent when we do so. Yeah. And that has not wanting to repeat work that you've done because someone else made a terrible last minute decision that screws you over. I think it's a perfectly reasonable stance. Yeah. And as for getting content out on launch day, honestly, we don't make a bunch more money for doing that. No. Um, a, a YouTube view is not worth nearly as much as you might think in terms of monetary value. So yeah, we'll get a few more views. But for me, it's more about making sure that we are perceived as a place that you go when you go and get like graphics card news about a new yeah. card that launches. And if, you know, Let's say, let's say we weren't able to bring people in on the weekend. If our video goes up and it's just Vega 64 and everyone else's video or written review goes up and it's Vega 56 and Vega 64, it makes us look stupid. And we don't want that. And we shouldn't have to work through the weekend in order to do that. Companies should be respectful of our time and our schedules and the fact that we have lives and kids and other things we have to deal with. Um, that's the issue. What about likes? Are they worth more profit? No, no. likes are worth nothing. Exactly zero. <laughs> um, Some guy said Luke likes negative comments. Uh, they can be helpful. Because if someone's thinking those things genuinely, it's good to address it and uh, help them understand that they're wrong. Absolutely. Um, okay, this was posted originally on the forum by... James had like an hour to throw together the doc today, so I don't blame him for it not being there. Numlock21. Yeah, no. And the original article here is from Tom's Hardware. AMD has gone into a little bit more detail about their Epic and Threadripper chip designs, uh, claiming a 41% cost reduction, which would actually account for the difference in price between AMD's 16 core chip and Intel's. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. So they decided to go with um, like this modular design versus a monolithic design because even though the modular design because of the interconnects is 10% higher in cost, so 10% more die space, apparently it saves so many failures allowing them to, uh, or it saves so many failures that they can just take higher yield ones and quote unquote glue them together that they actually reduce their cost by, they estimate, 41%. That's pretty freaking cool. That is actually very cool. And that's very good for them specifically. Yeah. To be honest. And good for the they consumer. Need to be making money so that they can actually keep doing things. They like super do. Uh, Amazon has made its first big move with Whole Foods. The original article here is from Bloomberg. Um, Amazon wow. Prime members get discounts at Whole Foods. So you can pay just a uh, less inflated price for yeah. Yeah. groceries and paper bags instead of plastic bags because you're a giant hipster. Not that I'm judging. I've shopped at Whole Foods. Um, they also plan to make Prime the customer rewards program at Whole Foods. And products from Whole Foods private label 365 will be available on Amazon. They have not yet indicated a time frame for all these changes. I technically have never shopped there, but I've shopped at the like... <laughs> The like Langley alternative. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. it's um, it's it's so it's so funny. It's uh, it the, smells like health food. The structure of it is very much like a um, like a chain clothing store, like a Hollister. I think is the one that always smells like cedarwood. Mm. Is it Hollister? I don't I don't I don't know which clothing I don't stores. Know. But um, you know how you walk into them. I don't remember the last time I was in a mall. And they like feel really unique. Mm -hmm. And then you go to another one of the same store somewhere else and it's exactly the same flavor of totally unique where it's this very um contrived yeah uh you know we do this totally differently than everybody else so uh yeah I, no i shopped at whole foods i think i've been there twice okay uh, once because it was the only thing within walking distance of my hotel yeah and another time because i really needed an ice cream bar and i bought the only like 
with fat, with dairy, with gluten ice cream bar that in the whole there. store. Actually, yeah. no, I think it was gluten free. By the way, <laughs> if you're in Vancouver, I believe this weekend, or maybe only for one specific day, but look it up, Uber is like coming here now to Vancouver. Finally! For one. And I believe they're showing up by doing free ice cream bar deliveries. Oh, sick. But I think it's only in Vancouver. Sick. I don't think they're doing all, all, Uber all the way out here. If they are doing Uber all the way out here, I am getting my free ice cream bar. Actually, even if not, I might just like go down there to get a free ice cream bar. Because I'm going down there on Saturday anyways. What else do we have? Uh, this is from Bloomberg. Uh, Apple reported to unveil a new Apple TV that'll be faster, 4K, HDR video, blippity bloppity. Yep. Pixel 2 is coming October 5th. Rumor, rumor, rumor. Originally rumor. posted by TechCrunch. And, um, yep, it looks like a phone. It looks like a phone. It looks like a pixel. It, it has a thing here that's kind of pixely. Yep, the bezels are smaller, a lot smaller. Yep. Way smaller. Snapdragon 836. Uh, ba -da -ba -ba. It uh, could have front-facing speakers. I love that note. That's my favorite note from today. Apparently a two to one aspect ratio. Okay, I know that mathematically there's no reason to call, um, oh, what is it? Yeah, to call 16 by 10, 16 by 10, mm. right? You could just as easily call it eight by five. Yeah. But for the sake of making life a little easier, I kind of wish everyone would go like by nine mm -hmm. since we all know what 16 by nine is. Yeah. But the, what, what is a two to one aspect ratio? So that would be 18 by nine, I guess. Yeah, 18 by nine. But the fact that I have to convert it all the time <laughs> is gonna drive me crazy. To be fair, this probably affects almost no one but you. So there's some rumored specs. But I do understand where you're coming from. Uh, 4.97 inch 1080p display for the smaller one with a uh, six inch on the larger XL. Apparently it'll be provided by LG. It'll support, uh, or it'll sport four gigs of RAM on board. Internal storage might get boosted to 64 gigs. And uh, it's probably got a great camera. It might, there's a lot of like, it could, it might. Yeah. Uh, there's a, it might drop the headphone port, but it like. Might have front facing speakers. It might have squeezable sides. It might have Bluetooth. Well. It might be able to connect to the internet. Okay. We don't know. Maybe they're going with the uh, world's first modern smartphone without the internet. It's Wi-Fi hotspot only. Okay. I think we're probably done with this week. And thank you for watching the Web <laughs> Show. We will see you again next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Oh, SpaceX oh, photos of the new spacesuit are okay. actually super cool. Have you seen these? Fine, you can do that. I know I'm a fanboy, but like they're pretty neat. Um, all right, fine. We'll look at the new spacesuit. Wait, Just these aren't the ones that I saw. These aren't as cool. Oh, they're still pretty cool. Those don't look that amazing. No. Where's the cool ones? Those are just spacesuits. Where's the cool ones? Yeah, I think you're just... I think you're done. I think that's the wrong article. That is the wrong article. Okay. Here's the right article. Dang it, James, for throwing this together in an hour and screwing up one thing so far. It also doesn't have the other photo. Whatever! Let's talk about float plane stuff. Yeah! Float plane, not dead. Not dead. Definitely not dead. Doing well, great, actually. Doing Had a meeting really today. Great. People were cool. Thanks for showing up, guys that work on float plane. Uh, outdoor gaming, I the love ultimate all of you. camping battle station. I think we need a new thumbnail for this one that makes it more clear that we are in the middle of a forest gaming on like a freaking awesome gaming PC. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, mezzanine update I forgot to upload that I did at the last minute there. This is a really cool video. I think a lot of you will like it. We designed the ultimate gaming TV. Have you seen this? Have you heard no, about this? No, no. So um, Alex and I worked on this together and we basically conceptualized what a, what a perfect TV for gamers would be. And this is just a couple of, we've probably got somewhere between six and 10 features that TV makers, for whatever reason, have their heads too far up their I rectums. I think I heard about one of the features. Okay, so one of them was an integrated, um, what's that stupid thing called that you have? That um, uh, analog to digital converter. Whoa! Low what's that thing called again? Frame Meister. The Frame Meister. So, Is it actually a Frame Meister? So think about it. Think about this. It doesn't have to be. No. As long as it was something quite similar. So the Frame Meister, actually here, we're, no, nope, okay. We got the Frame Meister is probably like a little too overkill for most yes. people. Yes, so it costs about $400.
for a Frame Meister, which is this external box that takes your analog source, like a Super Nintendo or a PlayStation 1, and converts it to HDMI with next to no latency. Because as you may or may not have noticed, your TV, if it takes in an analog source, does a couple of things. Number one is even compared to its normal input lag, it adds even more lag. Oh, yeah. And number two is it does a crap-tastic job of the conversion. It'll look like garbage. So the Frame Meister does a great job of both of those things. Yep. At $400... It's a lot. It's a lot. But when you look at a premium TV, you look at the bomb cost of a premium TV, we're talking like five, six, seven thousand yeah. US dollars. Is it unreasonable to think a couple of things? Number one, that by cheaping out on some stuff we don't care about, like how thin it is, that they could find some of that cost to spend on oh, yeah. good analog to digital conversion. And number two, that they could achieve economies of scale that would make a Frame Meister cost a lot less. It's because not expensive there hardware. there really aren't that many Frame Meisters. That's one of the reasons why they're so expensive. Exactly. They're very niche. So anyway, that was one of the ideas. So retro gamers could game on their new TV and have a not crap experience. Um, so we've got a bunch of other ideas. Um, a modular system for the speakers. Yeah, that's so can, the one thing I had heard about. So you can take them off. They just clip on and they have like just contacts that go, or you could take them off, reposition them, run speaker wire, and then you could add like a, the rest of a kit or something like that. Um, display port in was one of the things we asked for. So there's a bunch of stuff, a lot of which would be very low cost to implement. Um, a return to front IO. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. come on, bring back. Front IO is nice. I don't mind a little chin bar. You know, give me, and so front, uh, front USB charging ports for controllers, um, for like uh, uh, VR accessories, things like that. So there's just a bunch of stuff we came up with. We designed what we think is a gaming TV, and we would love for the TV industry to, you know, maybe wake the crap up. Uh, we took a look at the first all AMD gaming PC from Dell. It's like taped onto the side. Well, yeah, but there's an actual chip inside too. That was for illustrative purposes, Luke. <laughs> That's awesome. How many PCIe extensions is too many? And the answer is a lot. Was it still working then? You bet. Oh my God. Um, That's crazy. Organization vlog day one. Wow, we've actually got a lot of good stuff on here right now. Cool, the last, uh, last week I think it was, I wasn't that enamored with a lot of it. Organization vlog day one. So this is basically a return to moving vlog. This was... <sighs> what? I watched the trailer for this. Yeah, there's uh, a trailer? There's oh. a, have you not seen the trailer? I haven't seen the trailer. We should play the trailer. Oh my goodness, okay, give me one second. I will get the trailer. Is it on Facebook or something? Nick send it to me. What? Okay, yeah, forward it to me. In the meantime, um, what else do we got? I think there's at least one other, like, pretty pretty cool one. Um, let, let me just make sure that there's anything in here it. that we don't There want. was another one that I thought people were going to like. I, I don't know if we're allowed now. to share this. Allowed to share the trailer? I guess you own the company, so... Yeah, okay, yeah, sure. Let's let's share it. Sick. Let, let's, just, let's just straight up YOLO it. Um, okay, hangouts to me? Bump. Cool. Okay, so I'm gonna go... Hide the URL. Yeah, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. I'm going full screen so I don't screw myself again. Okay, and oh man, I don't know if I... Oh, I don't know if I've got sound over HDMI right now. I don't know if you guys are gonna hear any of this. Um, so I apologize in advance if everything is... The audio cool. is super helpful. Is it? Okay, I'm just gonna turn up the speakers. We're going the janky way. Yeah! Janky way! Yeah! All right, all right, here we go. Because this is great. Okay, here we go. On a screen, let's get rid of us. We're boring. Yep. I mean, we're cool, but we're not as cool as this, yep. apparently. Watch now on Float Plane. <laughs> so yeah, that's actually super sick. Who did that? Uh, that was A Prime. Oh, cool. As far as I know. That is a dank AF edit. So I don't if even you want to see we're uploading that. what that 
trailer results in. Yeah. That's on full plan right now. Go check it out. Yeah. And there's going to be three episodes of, uh, of new moving vlog. So organization vlog, uh, over the next, over the next few weeks. Yeah. And, uh, now's as good a time as any to sign up for float plane. Cause don't forget guys that scrapyard wars season six will also be coming one week early to float plane. So yes, it's going to be good. Yes. All right. See you guys again next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. I'm gonna fix this thing before I get confused next week. There we go. Cool. What was that day? Can you scroll back up? Oh God. Uh... Oh. Oh, that's no, I understand the question. Uh, it wants to know if but then, the, like, I don't know when that's happening. Yeah, I don't know either. That's a good question. Um, someone wanted, who is this? Uh, Boogerbomb01 wanted to know if all the construction mezzanine update videos that were exclusive will still be on the platform once we finally accept payment methods other than PayPal. Um, tell you what, I will. Oh, the mezzanine yeah, ones. Yeah, I'll, I'll find a, we'll find a way to get them up. Yeah. Yeah, okay, there.